MMA meltdown on the Fight Network continues. I am Gabriel Morenci. Let's crunch some numbers with the premier combat sport odds maker in the business. Joey Odessa steps up and in. Joey, it's always a pleasure. How you doing? Hey, what's happening tonight, G? We're doing all right, uh, Joey. Looking forward to another weekend of fights, this time from Japan. And, you know, this is an MMA Paris type of card. You know, the average Joe six-pack's not going to know who a lot of these guys are, but people that follow Pancras, people that follow Dream, people that have been longtime MMA fans are going to know who a lot of these Asian fighters are. And I'm looking forward to seeing Rin Nakai and Misha Tate, but we'll get to that uh, in a couple of minutes. Uh, First off, uh, Joey, you know, we talked about it last week. Although we both thought big, uh, Bigfoot was the play, we weren't in a hurry to be laying minus 400 against Andre Arlovsky. But I got to tell you, I'm going broke underestimating Andre Arlovsky. It's like the third fight in a row. I thought Arlovsky didn't have a chance in, and he didn't win. I didn't lay the 400, but I got caught speeding with a parlay. But, you know, betting on a heavyweight fight is like playing blackjack, man. You sit down at the table, you put your chip on the table, and then you just hope for the best. Well, you get the top three or four guys in the division, and then there's everybody else And any given Sunday with these guys. You know, I mean, the number we said, I mean, we're not going to run out the lay it real fast. I mean, these heavyweights, even this week, you know, with Roy Nelson and going up against Mark Hunt, I mean, who really wants to just go lay a price on a guy that, you know, could arguably get taken down right away by Roy and, you know, maybe crucifixed and subbed? I mean, unless Roy neglects to stand with him, which – you know, could be, well, you know, two big guys hitting each other could be disastrous for either guy. But, you know, you got to give, uh, you got to give the slight edge to Nelson, I would say, despite Hunt being the favorite. Yeah, I don't understand why Mark Hunt is the favorite. You know, Mark Hunt's been on a roll. He's been on a roll. You know, he's coming off that, uh, the, the classic uh, draw against uh, Bigfoot. He lost to Dos Santos, uh, but he gained a lot of respect uh, with the beating that, uh, that he suffered. But, you know, before that, he beat Struve, he beat Congo, he beat Rothwell, he beat Chris Tersher. He was on he was on quite a roll. He has been on quite a roll. So I don't want to take anything away from Mark Hunt. But Roy Nelson's a much complete, you know, more complete fighter than Mark Hunt is. As you mentioned, if this fight goes to the ground, you know, Roy Nelson could potentially sub him. And I think Roy Nelson could knock Mark Hunt out. I'm not so sure Mark Hunt can knock Roy Nelson out. I don't know if anybody can knock Roy Nelson out at this point in time. I, I would like Nelson no matter what the, the line is. And you always talk, Joey, about you can't like a fighter just because of what the number is. Look at the fights before you see the number and decide who you like. And I look at this and I wouldn't, you know, if I was an odds, I wouldn't bat an eye if Roy Nelson was a minus 130 favorite in this fight. I'm actually surprised that Mark Hunt is as high as 150 at some spots. Yeah, you got to travel and stuff. Plus, I mean, Roy's coming off, you know, he, he beat Nog, but he's coming off losses, which are not real bad losses. I mean, he lost to Cormier. He lost to Stipe Miosic, which, you know, I, I don't know where Stipe's been lately. He might be a good matchup for Arlovsky next, you know, with Arlovsky coming off that win to kind of gauge where Arlovsky, that, where both of them are at. I mean, the heavyweight division now is everybody out of, like, the top three is, I mean, it's competitive. I mean, you got Arlovsky, you got, you know, the potential Rothwell uh, rematch the potential Roy Nelson rematch if he wins, potential Overeem fight where you could really figure out which of those two guys is, you know, I mean, that might be the best of them all. I mean, that could, that could headline somewhere despite Overeem just getting smoked. Miles Jury's a 5-1 to one favorite, and rightfully so. This kid's a monster, isn't he? A lot of times, a lot of these TV guys don't live up to the hype, uh, Joey, but Miles Jury's been delivering. He's starting to climb the ladder a little bit and start to fight tougher opponents. We saw that against Diego Sanchez, and he got it done. You know, not often you can say, oftentimes we'll say, ah, the guy, he's going to win, but he's overpriced. I don't know if you can say that about Jury. The guy's been money in the bank. Yeah, I mean, he beat Diego, he beat Ricci, uh, and he beat Johnson, who's been uh, yeah. you know, the upset special. And uh, he's 5-0 in the UFC, 14-0 overall. I mean, Gomi, though, is no joke. I mean, Gomi's tough. I mean, he's coming off, uh, he beat, what, Isaac Valley flag in his last outing, and he's fighting on his home turf. But, I mean, you got to like Miles Jury here. I mean, Miles is, you know, the price on Miles, it, it, it's a high price, but, you know, this is another one of those cards where if you want to win, I mean, you, you don't want to jump into the live dogs that won't win, and Gomi could be fall into that category, along with, uh, you know, the, the bout rate underneath it, Akiyama and Amir Sadala. I mean, a lot of people like Amir and both these guys coming off a long way off. Akiyama hasn't won in 
gosh, I don't know how long. I mean, considering the layoff, too, what he's lost to, I think he's dropped his last three fights. Uh, you know, yeah, four in a row. I mean, Jake Shields, Belfort, Bisping, even lost to Lieben. So, uh, but then again, Amir has never been a world beater. I mean, I got to like Akiyama here. I mean, especially at home. I mean, if it goes to the cards, you know, it, it, the early judging is going to be telling, too. I mean, you have a lot of Korean versus uh, Japanese matchups on here. And I tell you what, you got a Miles Jury pro, uh, protege here, and it's Johnny Case who uh, he had eye surgery, and he looks like he's coming off a long layoff, and they put him up against uh, Tokadami, I guess you would say his name. Tokadami's a pretty big favorite. This Johnny Case has been waiting for his opportunity. Not a bad fighter. So, I mean, there's a lot on this card to look forward to. I think it's a good card, and... You know, it's unfortunate that it comes on at one thirty in the morning, but for guys like us and people that are gambling on this stuff, I mean, you got we have to admit, I mean, the fight pass being on the Internet is, is and the gambling, the online gambling, they're both fueling each other. I mean, it's like, uh, you know, it's like gasoline and fire, back and forth, back and forth. And I really do believe that it contributes to that, you know, that you could, you could you know, have a direct... Uh, you know, a direct correlation between the amount of pay, well, not pay-per-view buys, but fight pass subscriptions and, you know, the sports betting. I think they, they work hand-in-hand hand, like the NFL, you know, the NFL Sunday ticket. Yeah, I'd like to see. I'd like to know, actually. It'd be interesting to see how many people are going to watch this card on fight pass at 1.30 in the morning that aren't betting on it. I know there's diehards and there's purists watching the show that say, I don't bet on the fights and I still watch them anyways. But let's be honest, I think there's probably about 70% of the people going to be watching this stuff at 2 in the morning are watching it because they have action. And what better time to start a fight card than at 1.30 in the morning after a long day of college football. we got to get out of here, Joey, but in like 15, 20 seconds. Rinna Kai is a really interesting fighter. She does these cool videos all the time. She's real strong, strong as hell. But Misha Tate's pretty strong, too. Misha Tate's a pretty big favorite. Is Rinna Kai worth a look as a home dog? You know, I'd say she's worth a look, but, you know, she's also, uh, you know, she says a lot of the promotional stuff. You know, she's trying to do something outside the box. She hasn't lost yet. She got a uh, third in the national uh, Japanese uh, judo championships, which makes her, you know, very credible because judo is, you know, huge over there. Did I say gymnastics or judo? She went from judo to gymnastics and back to judo. And, you know, these photos and, you know, with the new Ultimate Fighter, I mean, there's no secret here that, um, you know, it's not paying any pictures. I mean, beauty and sex sells, and I don't know how the, the ratings are doing, but, you know, I, I think that it'll help. You know, it does nothing but promote the fight. Well, we'll she see. Was the queen uh, of pancreas. All right, Joey. So, uh, uh, Joey, I said 30 seconds, not uh, 30 minutes, Joey. Come on. So, okay, you know, I'm just you giving like you the rundown on it. No, no, you like me. A lot of people you, don't know. You like Misha Tate, right? Yeah, I think Misha will get it done. All right, so we, we got to wrap it up. MMA Meltdown of the Fight Network continues.